Greetings one and all, this is Rhythm Works and welcome to my channel and today I'm archiving. Um, as you can see I've got some of my Fight Night Champion fights that I've had stored on my other hard drive um, in this hard drive, in my PS3 hard drive. But what I had to do, I had to literally convert them from my Ava Media Game Capture HD. Now with that they had they, there were limitations in relations to how I can edit them. Um, Sony Vegas Pro won't recognize the raw file. And when it's converted into MP4 with the included software that's supplied, once you put the recording into Sony Vegas, it either just recognizes the audio or just recognizes the video. It doesn't recognize both. So that was really a problem for me so i had to literally use audacity or another recording device and then match it up um into sony vegas but that was kind of like long-winded for me but then again you know you know where there's dedication there's perfection so um i didn't really have the, the time to do that so i just basically had all these fights stored in my hard drive now since i've purchased the elgato um I was interested to find out how I can um, edit and do commentaries on pre-recorded uh, gameplay. And the good thing about the Ava Media and its conversion um, package is that once you convert the files to MP4, PlayStation recognizes it. So, so that's what I'm basically doing. So I'm just um, converting the raw AVI files to MP4 files and then transferring them from my other hard drive into my PS3 hard drive and then I play I play the videos on the PS3 and record it through my Elgato and do my commentaries at the same time I hope that makes sense um, that's basically the way I can do commentaries over archived material so so really the Elgato is 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 a versatile piece of kit. It really, really is. And I can't I can't big big them up, big up the company enough. You know. Um, I'm gonna be featuring um one of my earliest fights with um with Pemby sixty six. We we've known each other quite a while now and you know we're constant gaming buddies. So um this is just basically a video, you know, to feature him and also me um in our real guises so to speak because we're both using creative fighters based upon you know our characteristics so i hope you enjoy it Ladies and gentlemen, good evening i'm joe tessitore alongside teddy atlas and we welcome you to the metro manila arena we're here in the philippines for our main event 12 rounds of lightweight action. Great atmosphere here tonight. You talk to everybody ringside, and they expect this one to be a barn burner. And his opponent across the ring, hailing out of Manchester, Carlos Juan Vasquez. All right, fellas. Let's have a good clean fight. Touch him up and let's go. And we are underway for this scheduled 12 rounder. Be interested to see early on here how much an advantage there is with speed. Rounds full of it. He has blazing hands, Teddy. Can he keep it up all night long? I think he's going to have to. The Lions showing you what it takes to be the best in this business. Good, crisp combos. Brown's defense is paying off now. Brown's defense did a good job there, able to avoid that punch. 
Lions. The Lions doing well here with that two-punch combination. That is a big right hand after eating one himself. Committing to the body work with the double jab. Halfway through this round here. Round's almost looking foolish that time he missed so badly. Lions putting his punches together now. That's a nice combination. Rounds proving to be elusive. You know, we only show up when it's time to watch them do their thing for the fight, but they're really working at it day in and day out just to make weight. What's so tough about making weight in boxing? Well, it can weigh you down. I mean, it takes discipline. And all of a sudden, it allows you a trail of excuses because now you can start to say, well, gee, you know, I didn't do this. You know, I, I, it's the drudgery of it and it's the consistency of it. When you have to stay at a weight and you have to watch that weight, you have to balance it where you're also going to be able to have a physicality when you get in the ring. You don't want to be weak. So you want to get that right balance where you're disciplined, you get the weight down, but you don't lose that physical edge. And that's the end of the round. A round in which this guy just didn't show a whole lot of defense. Teddy, why is it that everybody thinks they can punch, but not everybody knows how to defend themselves? Well, you know, I take a guy off the street, and I guarantee you, Joe, he'll come in the ring, he'll start swinging, he'll windmill a little bit. But getting away from the punches, that's something that has to be taught. Great movement to get away from those punches. I like that step back right there. Just enough to be out of danger, but still close enough to then lay in the counter punch. Well, that's what happens when you have that kind of experience. You're calm enough to know that range. Know where the beginning of the punch and the end of the punch is. The Lions out there just waiting on a counter punch, isn't he? Yeah, well, first of all, why is he? Because he knows if he walks in, he's going to get caught. So what he wants to do is he knows there's basically a guard at that door. He's trying to get that guard to get out of there so he could go through that door. stuff firing right back with one of his own good work by Brown The Warriors coming up with the answers, avoiding that punch.
10 seconds remaining in this round. The Lions doing something that I often question, and that's a fighter going out there as that round comes to an end. And once again, just being able to say he didn't put forth enough effort. Why? Because it's a mental game, Joe, and it's about confidence. And right now, he does not have the confidence to go forth and do those things. Even though you and me are looking and we see the opportunities there, he doesn't see them. He doesn't feel them. Got to try to do better than that. He missed with that hook. There's the headshot, but he parries it away. Takes one to give one. Uppercut in return. There's that southpaw jab in the left hand. Missed the body shot. And now you can see him zoning in on the target with that double jab. He's showing what a skilled fighter he is with the counter punching. Well, the old times used to say, when you calm in there, when you're in control in there, you can make him do what you want. He made him tie his shoelaces right there. Coming to the halfway point of this third round. Off to the side, a little swing and a miss going upstairs. Brown's not just loading up, he's landing combination punches like he did right there. Gets hit, but he gives it right back. Brown's so dangerous with that accuracy, a two-punch combination landing. Brown's got a way of just getting away from that punch. Brown's landing a combination here. That's what he does when he's at his very best. And that's the end of round three. Lions enjoying a lead on Teddy's scorecard the first time we look at the scores ringside here tonight. Although early on here, it's not as if either man is in complete control of this fight. Brown's in a good rhythm defensively here. Teddy, what is that, a credit to his ability to anticipate? You know, also, it's the teaching. Let's give the trainers credit. Of course, let's give his background of the amateurs credit, but he learned how to get away from punches. This is technique that was taught to him. The Lions showing you that sublime skill right now with that two-punch combo. And now we got a fight. He fires back a right hand of his own. Whoa, whoa. 
Really wanted that uppercut, but just couldn't get it. Good counter punch. I loved how he moved off to the side and landed it. Yeah, that's real smart. That's something that you teach in the gym, and you love when you see it executed. 90 seconds to go in round number four. Very accurate with the double jab. I think the lesson to be learned here is it's a marathon, not a sprint. He has treated this fight like it's a sprint early on here. Yeah, and the tortoise is starting to pass him right by, waving at him, saying, ha. Ah. Teddy, I'm starting to wonder, what is the answer for this guy? Can he do anything else than this? Yeah, he throws punches, but he has no accuracy. Can this change in mid-fight? Well, it has to if he wants to win this fight. And how does it change? Well, you know, the problem is these things have to be put in place in the gym. I don't know if you could do it right now, but if you could, you tell him in the corner, hey, tighten up a little bit, you know, shorten up these darn punches. Oh, what a hook upstairs. That right hand serving him well. Little volume punching to the body there. Ten seconds to go in this round. He digs in, trying to bank away body shots with the combo. Brown's going to think about the next time he throws a punch because he just got hit by a good, solid counter. Brown's in complete control here as he takes a rest after a round in which he really dominated the action. Is there anything, Teddy, that you see that he should be thinking about when he gets off the stool here for the next round? Yeah, you know, he should follow up on his lead, on his edge, on his advantage. You know, he's, I noticed that he's hurting him in the body. Well, now start to double up that hook. One downstairs, one upstairs. Well, his opponent is opening up and coming forward, so I would think there are some opportunities that exist. Yeah, I think some counter-punching opportunities. Opportunities not on the front end, but on the back end. He got hit right there, but he also gave one. Solid effort by the Lion. A little give and take, and here comes the left hand. The Lions doing what every trainer wants to see their fighter do. Land punches in bunches. The combination lands. Halfway into round number five here. Round switch. Oh, and he got caught right there. Everything was going fine, and then he got caught. Well, that's the problem. It was going too fine. He got a full sense of security. The other guy wasn't throwing back. He took for granted, and bang, you can't take for granted in this ring. The Warriors' failure to get away from his opponent's right hand is really the difference in this fight. Yeah, it is. He continues to get hit with the same punch. Needs to slip to the left. Needs to improve that accuracy. Miss with the headshot. The Lions landed a good, solid combination.
just putting forth a great combination there. Final 10 seconds of this fifth round. And this round comes to an end. It is a round that was highly entertaining. These guys really put forth quite an effort. Well, they both have high engines. They have motors that never stop going. Brown's off to a fresh start right now. That last round, he was really shook up. But he looks to be steady on his feet here. Lions, the kind of boxer that wants to do just that. Find the target, get the combination working, land both punches. Rounds doing good damage with the combination punching. Well, right there's a good example of the benefit of combination punching. You miss the first or the second, the third and the fourth, they land. Brown's opponent landing an effective counter punch right there. And now he's targeting upstairs. to dismiss his opponent's shot. Oh, he is stunned. He could go down. There it is. He is down on the floor after taking that shot. And there's a lot of time left in the round. Down he goes, now up he gets. And if he wants to stay up, he's going to have to grab on. Kill a little time. Frustrating his opponent with great defense. Oh, he took some damage, but he gave some back with the right hand. Brown's been able to avoid having any of his opponent's headshots landing flush. And what his opponent has to do, Joe, is make an adjustment. What we used to tell the fighters, when a guy's elusive like this fighter is right now, you have to shorten your punches up. Shorten them up a little bit, have less space to travel. They have a better chance of getting to that elusive target. The Lions combination punching working out well there. He landed three solid shots. Brown's combination punching is working well here. Working our way towards the bell. Last 10 seconds of the sixth. How about that left right there? And yet another big shot comes in. Oh, and he goes down again. The question is, can he rise up and continue on? Boy, what a break he just caught. The bell rings at the end of the round. Saved by the bell. And if you're in the corner, what do you do? Well, you just finished painting the house, you know, and you want to paint a little more, but the paint is still wet. You got to wait for it to dry a little bit. You got to wait for your guy to wake up. You got to wait for the cobwebs to go away before you can do more painting. You can see he's trying to score up top, but off the mark there. So he went down earlier, and yet he's still fighting with the same kind of style, the same kind of disposition he was fighting with before the knockdown. If I'm the opponent, maybe that's a sign to me that, hey, maybe I didn't hurt the guy that much. Or 
Maybe it's a sign that this son of a gun is just very predictable. He can't change. And maybe I'm going to have a party tonight because I'm going to keep catching with the same thing until he takes it away from me. That's a good point. The Lions. He is damaged badly there. He may hit the floor. Did you see that? Can he beat the count? I don't think so here, Teddy. Now I know where they got that saying. Falling like a sack of potatoes. victory for him. stamp on his evening yeah bring down the curtain and make sure that more people are going to be talking about you when they leave the arena tonight for teddy atlas i'm joe tessitore that does it ringside we'll see you next time please by all means comment rate subscribe and all that good stuff thanks for watching